Welcome to Art With Ian. Today we're going to be talking about making your own chalky rendering brush. This is going to be great for like 80% of all of your rendering needs. Has enough texture to kind of avoid that over airbrushed look, but renders nicely and isn't a pain to use. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new canvas so that we can actually build our brush texture. So we're going to go file new and I'm going to set this to inches and I'm going to go five by five. And now we don't really have to go this big, but I usually just do. You could go probably an inch by an inch would be fine. But anyways, five by five, hit create. And I'm going to change my background color to white, actually. And normally I don't have my background white, but in this case, I want to see the texture contrast better. So change my background to white, create a new layer. And I'm going to get a brush, go to my brush tool, and I'm going to use this soft round pressure size brush. And basically what I want to do is I want to create a texture that will be the basis of, of how the brush looks when I'm using it. So using that, this brush here, I'm going to change my size. I'm using the bracket left on my keyboard. I'm sizing my brush down and I'm just going to, oh, I need to change my color from white to, I'm not going to go all the way black. I'm going to go just like close, like a really dark gray. And I'm just going to start varying the pressure and uh, you know, so not tapping exactly the same pressure each time. I'm just going to start creating some splotches. And I don't really care. I, the only thing I care about is that they're not uniform. I don't want them to be uniform. And we don't have to do too, too many of these because we're going to duplicate the layer. And I think that's probably enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate, and I'm going to hit Control T to transform it, and I'm going to rotate this a bit, and maybe make it a little bit bigger. Hit Enter to accept that. Then I'm going to hit Control J again, Control T to transform it, rotate it some more, change the size a little bit. And let's do another one. Control J, Control T, rotate it, and maybe increase the size of this one a little bit. Hit Enter to accept. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, holding down Shift, so you can see I have the top layer highlighted. Holding down Shift and click on the bottom layer, and that'll highlight all of them. Then I'm going to right click and merge these layers. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this layer and hit control T to transform that. And I'm going to rotate it a bit, maybe increase the size a little bit, and I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to change the opacity of this first one below down some so that it's not as dark as the one on top. I'm going to hit control J to duplicate it, control T, and then rotate that one. And increase the size a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's about good. Okay, and maybe I'll turn the opacity down on that one just a little bit. There we go. Something like that. Now that we've got this, I'm going to merge. So click on the top layer, hold shift, click on the bottom, and right click and merge them. Now that I've got this, I'm going to use my marquee tool. So if you don't have yours set to a rectangle, right click it and it'll give you the options. Set it to rectangle. And I'm going to just grab basically a a square out of here. I'm going to hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I'm going to turn off my original texture. So now I'm left with this kind of a thing. That's a little too square for me, so I'm going to hit Control T, right click, and warp. And I'm going to kind of just tug this a little bit out of square, just kind of move things around a little bit. Hit enter. 
that's probably about good and now I'm going to um, I'm going to make this into a brush preset. I'm going to define this as a brush preset so what you do to do that is you come up to edit and down here uh, define brush preset right here click on that I'm going to name this uh, chalky tester okay so now we're gonna leave here we're gonna come over to another canvas this canvas can be whatever size you want it's just I just have another 5x5 five five canvas and create a new layer and right here above the brushes panel you'll you'll see a, a brush icon with the little lines this is brush settings so you want to open this up and I'm gonna turn on shape dynamics and click into that and the only thing I'm going to change here is the angle jitter I'm going to go up to five percent not a lot of angle jitter just a tiny bit five percent next thing I'm going to do is turn on the dual brush setting and now if you scroll I ch actually checked a couple other pe uh, people's photoshops before I did this to make sure it's not just brushes that I have if you scroll to the very bottom of this list Go to the very bottom you'll see a comb brush right here and next to the left of that you'll see a couple of kind of textury brushes this one that's the 33 rough round bristle we want to duel with this one but before we do that we want to change the size of our brush to match the size of this brush so I'm going to come up here where the where you see the 161 and the down arrow I'm going to click that down arrow and I'm going to change the size down to 30 uh, 34 is fine it's close enough and so now that I've got a brush at the same size basically as this one I'm going to duel with it and I'm going to change the count from 1 to 2 I'm going to change the spacing from 18 to 10 and I'm going to change the mode from color burn to overlay that's actually really important for the way we want this to look and one last thing just turn on transfer we're actually not going to change any of the settings we want to if if yours doesn't say pen pressure change it to pen pressure but it should default to that so with pen pressure as the control setting nothing else changed just that and we're going to come over here let's blow this up using bracket the right bracket key to change my brush size up and look at that for a chalky texture that is I love that texture and the thing that's really nice about this is that you can actually get pretty nice like you can get it to to render pretty clean or you can have you know a, a quite textured look too so let's uh, get rid of this layer let's actually see what we can do with this really quick control shift N to create a new layer and before we do anything else we're gonna go ahead and actually save this brush so right down here at the bottom you'll see create new brush right now if we were to leave the brush and try and come back to it all the settings we made would be gone so we're going to take this and rename it from chalky tester so we tested it out we like it and now to render and I'm gonna leave both of these checked capture brush and include in tool settings and hit OK and now that brush is officially saved now if I look down here you'll see it's not in any of my sets so if I wanted to put it in a set like my essentials set which is where I put most of my brushes I would click on it drag it and hover over the folder and let go and now that will be in my essentials so probably at the bottom or I'm not sure exactly where it's slotted in here chalky tester chalky render there chalky render uh, I've got a few chalky renders from doing tests <laughs> but anyway um, yeah so now that's saved let's go let's get a like a green and paint a line here now it would be without a, a decent rendering brush it would be pretty hard to transfer nicely into like orange let's say so Let's get like a bright orange, like something like this. 
I'm going to turn the settings off there. Okay. Now, if we make... So, from this green, we want to get a nice gradation happening. And so, with this... But we don't want, like, you know, that, that fake-looking, overly smooth airbrush look. We want, like, a decent uh, gradation uh, with some texture in it. So, I'm using... As I've... As I feather out the first line, I'm using my um, eyedropper, holding down Alt, to grab new shades as I... So this is basically like palette mixing straight on the canvas. That's not... That's, uh, that's pretty good for like actual interest in your in your gradation. So if I were to get like the marquee tool and do something like this, control C to copy, control V to paste and then turn off that. Basically that's that's a really nice gradation from dark green to like bright orange without having that really fake airbrush look like airbrush is good for certain things but most surfaces have texture and so you'll find like you're, you're trying to render something and it just looks fake or digital or like you used an airbrush like and i know the temptation to use an airbrush to get smooth gradations because it's so easy but it's like a temptation you should avoid <laughs> basically um let's try another thing let's make a circle let's uh, fill this in fill it in with like a 50-50 a blue now if I go a little darker, a little more saturated brush like if I render this with this brush instead of using an airbrush, it's gonna have some character. It's not gonna have that, you know, hyper smooth airbrush feel that it can, like again, it can be good for some instances, but I frequently see the misuse of airbrush in people's digital art which is and when I first started I used the airbrush a bunch as well and I it was hard to break away from because I couldn't find a brush that actually felt like it enabled me to to get the controlled rendering I wanted without um you know ending up just laboring over the transitions of my val like of my set uh my hue and my value it, like getting the transitions to to look right was really tough and finally i learned how to make my own brushes after probably a longer than i should have waited and that's why i'm making this video hopefully to save you from from you know making the same kind of mistake like there aren't that many videos on YouTube on making brushes. Um, I mean, there are some, but like just making a brush like this with a nice chalky texture that you can render with that will basically cover 80% of all of your painting needs. Like obviously you'll need a hard surface brush for line work, like an inking brush maybe. And you'll need, you'll need an airbrush once in a while for some things and specialty brushes once in a while. but. Most of the time, this a brush like this will get you through just about anything that you're doing. So if we sized this down, you know, now when you when you look at that, it's it's got a little bit more interest than if it was just airbrushed. So, anyways, I hope you got something out of this. Try this brush out. Uh, it it's a great brush. I basically, since I've created it, I've basically used it for almost every, all of my rendering. It's rare that I switch to something else. So just wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you enjoy it. If you do like it, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Make sure you ring that bell for notifications of future videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.